Okay, uh, so I'm going to talk very briefly about Student Quiz. I'm sure it, a lot of people who are here today are fully aware of what Student Quiz is, but for those who aren't, it's essentially an activity that allows students to create quiz questions, and then the group or cohort can take those questions, uh, rate them using a star widget, comment on them if they wish, and basically earn points. That's the gamified element. Uh, this was designed by Professor Frank Cook, uh, pictured here from the University of Applied Sciences in Rapperswil, Switzerland. It was first released in November 2016, uh, and there was major OU involvement from 2019, just after I saw him present at Moodle Mute uh, UK 2019, I believe it was. Uh, so here are some screens of student quiz, just so everyone can see what it's like. Uh, I do apologise, this is in the Open University UK theme rather than the standard Moodle theme. Uh, so this is what OU systems look like. At the top you've got uh, the question filter for when there's hundreds of questions generated by students. So you can filter it by new um, questions that come in since last time you checked, if it's difficult for yourself or for the community. In the top right hand corner you've got the My Progress box and that gives you um, information about the last uh, question that you took, whether or not it was right or wrong, uh, how many questions there are in the question bank for this activity that you haven't yet taken, so in this case there's three, and uh, depending on what workflow you're using, uh, where tutors, uh, sorry, teachers need to approve the question, um, you've, you've got statistics about that as well. You've then got the ranking box, which uh, you can set to be anonymized uh, so that only your uh, student account shows and that gives you a score and this is not a great screenshot because it's actually just got a load of zeros. Moving down you've got the main question table and in this example we've got some uh, pinned questions that have been produced by the course team and that I added for them and uh, we've tagged them as the examples as well and uh, essentially as soon as this activity opens for students um, some of these statistics about difficulty ratings and uh, the comments start to be populated. Here's an example of a question in student quiz. It's uh, the teacher view. So uh, you've got the normal question uh, screen there with your options and check button, etc. What the uh, teacher sees is the ability to approve a question um, if, if there's such a workflow set. And uh, when a question has not been approved, a teacher can use the private comments tab to communicate back to the, the student who's authored the question, just in case there's any feedback. Uh, perhaps they're going to reject it, um, and the student has to uh, remake the question and then resubmit it, etc. Once it is actually approved, then other students can take it, and that is where other students can use the public comments section to, to feedback about the, the question as well. So recently we've actually remade all of the commenting uh, to use the Atto text editor and uh, we've added in basically a lot of mini forum features to it as well. I've already just mentioned the private commenting uh, which is a brand new feature and there's of course a lot of notification settings. I mean we've, we've basically rebuilt forum into the bottom student quiz. Uh, we've also recently added a ton more question filtering options and support for separate groups. I don't think this is perhaps so much of a problem at University of Rapperswil, um, but at the Open University some of our cohorts can be a thousand, two thousand students, so we needed that group support because, you know, uh, that's just the po potential for generating so many questions uh, and then it just ended up with uh, something that you couldn't really sort through. And I think there are some universities in China that are also using this tool, and they've got even bigger cohorts as well. So the entire point of student quiz is that you can only understand something if you can explain it to others, and this is saying has been attributed to Einstein, but you'll also find it in active learning theory and uh, the Richard uh, Feynman technique as well. So the emphasis, the really important thing about student quiz when you're creating questions as a student author is, is not just the actual uh, design of the question, the answers, the distractions, etc., but key is adding feedback to explain why responses are correct or incorrect. 
The student quiz itself aligns well with Moodle's constructivist principles and it'd be really nice if it could become a core tool in the next few years. Uh, so when I've previously spoken at Moodle Moot about student quiz, I've often been asked about real use case studies at the OU. So I just want to talk about contemporary issues in organisations. Uh, this is a postgraduate 15 credit course in the OU MBA and student quiz is woven into January, February study weeks as a learning activity. Now this is quite different to how it's been used elsewhere, which is where it was just left to students to use as a sort of self um, revision generation tool. So we ensured that there was a clear explanation of the entire activity and its processes uh, throughout the module in, in, the, uh, sorry, in the course in the weeks leading up to it. Um, I've just shown a screenshot of the example of C questions and that was designed as an icebreaker. Nothing scarier for a student than coming to an empty forum. So we thought that we should have these seed questions there for them. Uh, there were 60 students in this course and uh, about 37% created at least one question in the student quiz and 62% took one or more questions. So unsurprisingly, students who are engaged are engaged. It's not brilliant participation, uh, but it wasn't linked to assessment or course pass. So we'll see how uh, it compares with the usage on the second course presentation um, in the new year. However, we did get some really useful feedback from students. Uh, many said that they found it a fascinating activity where they created questions for themselves. Uh, it did become clear, however, that, they, that we need more scaffolding for Moodle quiz creation. Uh, that has led to us creating um, several improvements in our student-facing guidance in our computing guide. Uh, we actually removed the true false question type because a lot of students fed back to us, well, I can just do that in single choice. Uh, and we're also going to explore uh, user tours in the next presentation. Uh, there was quite a few comments from students, but it seemed to be particular to student core, uh, sorry, to Moodle core. Um, the first one was about the question forms needing to be more friendly. And uh, there was quite a lot of confusion about the shuffling feature and the matching question type. Um, at the time, we did feedback to some improvements in the help text. Um, and I think we really need to dig down and find out the exact source of confusion with the students. Uh, there was three specific user improvements, which I'm going to talk about on the next screen. So these are things that we're working on at the moment, that will happen in the next couple of years. Uh, take it all with a pinch of salt. So, as I just mentioned, the user feedback. First one is about the question approval workflow being more obvious when it's turned on. So this is essentially that the student creates a question, that the tutor uh, approves it. If they don't approve it, then it has to go uh, be changed by the student and then reset to be reviewable. We just need to make this clearer. Uh, another one that students said back to us was about commenting. Allowing, this, um, allowing commenting to end points and also having a review phase, which we currently don't support at the moment, but that's essentially a way for uh, students to be able to go back into the activity uh, later on. Uh, they can't score any new points, but they can uh, maybe check on it at the end of the module. Uh, so this is the new, new features. Um, first one is a move to tabbed navigation. Uh, again, at the OU, we're really using it for tutor approval, sorry, teacher approval workflows. Uh, so we want to be able to have a, a much better uh, way of separating out the unapproved questions from the approved questions. And we think that the best way of doing this is to have a sort of a question studio uh, versus the question pool. And the question pool is where all the approved questions are. Uh, that would also mean that we'd move the ranking and statistic pages to these new tabs as well. Uh, and there's also quite a lot to do with completion criteria and adding pass criteria as well to the activity. Uh, there's quite a lot of admin stuff on our to-do list, a uh, way to reset all the content or to duplicate an activity um, without all the user content in it. Uh, we also want to be able to hide question types fully and we also want greater control over the rankings block options, including even hiding it. It's a great option, but sometimes uh, it doesn't always suit the specific design. 
uh, finally, uh, a way for stu students to, excuse me, <coughs> Sorry, uh, ability for staff to override the username, e.g. CD to example questions. Right, yeah, thank sure. you. <laughs> to make it clear that the author is the course team, um, because you just can't tell if it's set to anonymous mode. So we need a, a de-anonymize mode, uh, effectively, for selective questions. There's also a lot of stuff that's to do with core changes, and uh, that's to do with the question forms, the uh, ability to hide certain parts that don't apply to student quiz in any way, uh, such as the ID number, the draft ready status, uh, standard instructions, or even multiple tries, because it just doesn't apply to student quiz. <coughs> so we have got, essentially, lots to do in the next three years. Uh, and now I am definitely going to have a drink of water, and hopefully there's some questions. Thanks, Chris. So we probably have time for one question. Hello. I use Question Bank to create, of course, a quiz. And we do cycles over years. And then we build the course with each student cohorts building a quiz. Do you have a, an export at the end in the workflow to export to a regular quiz? <clears throat> uh, well, you can do that. You just go into Question Bank under the student quiz activity. Uh, and you can move the questions out or copy the questions out. Uh, we haven't really done anything similar ourselves at the Open University yet, though, but it is supported. Okay, thank you. And maybe one more. Thank you, very interesting. I was wondering if uh, in the workflow, if the instructors could also review the feedback that students propose to give to the students for false answers, for example, uh, beyond the questions themselves? Uh, that's a good question. So we haven't done too much scholarship on uh, exactly how students have used the commentary. Um, obviously, that's a very rich source. Um, so far in Open University uses, we haven't actually had too many cases for revision. So I guess with that, we just need more data, really, and, and more uses of student quiz. Uh, but certainly with Moodle uh, 4.0, and we've now got question versioning, we'll have to tie comments to specific versions of the questions, and, and that may allow greater analysis of changes that students make in uh, subsequent versions. Thank you. 